Hello everybody, welcome to Dr. Sam's Anatomy classes. I'm going to start teaching you about the upper limbs now. So it's an introductory class to the upper limbs. So right from the beginning, we'll start talking about the evolution of upper limbs. So how these upper limbs, you know, these the two four limbs actually from the quadruped we evolved. So these two upper limbs, like they are suspended by the side of the body, they are like freely suspended. So this free suspension of the you know, upper limbs or the upper limbs, they are of like great importance to human being. So they have a you know long, long, long back evolution starting from the aquatic life. So in the aquatic life, you know, this uh, there were these pectoral fins in the fishes. They had the pectoral girl that, that was like fixed thing and to those the wings the fins they were attached. So right from the aquatic life, you imagine, then came the amphibians. So amphibians like both, they had like both their terrestrial and aquatic life. And those amphibians, they had like developed their, their four limbs to take a leap, to jump in and out of the water and all. And remember those, if you've seen those frogs and toads, they have like, you know, pentadectyle four limbs the digits the five digits so that five digit pattern of the uh, you know, hand that has been preserved since centuries in us right from the amphibians then gradually from amphibians then came the reptiles like reptiles you know there was this phase like you know there some reptiles like snakes they like completely lost of these upper limbs they don't like upper limbs then there were crocodiles lizards they have like the upper limbs but the length of the upper limbs was like less because they had like just to crawl up on the walls or the floor then from the reptiles remember there was this connecting link from the, the apes the birds start arising like you know they were archaeopteryx if you remember and there was the connecting link from the reptiles and the apes so the gradually the four limbs they were used as the wings by the birds but there were other animals which start walking on the four limbs f o u r the four limbs means there were two four limbs f o r e and two hind limbs so those were the tetrapods those tetrapods the terrestrial animals they were like walking running and the purpose of this uh, you know f o u r four limbs was to basically to maintain the weight of the body against the gravity to maintain the posture of the animal as well as to help locomotion right so they were both like architectural ways you see the four limbs the animals the four and high limbs they were the same same parts because the purpose was nearly the same maintaining posture running and bearing the body weight then the evolution you must be knowing that Darwin's theory and all uh, with the gradual change of time there were grass on the floor like they had to like bend down so their neck the cervical region that increased so that the animal could move his head down to you know the nibble grass then somehow what happened like the grass was finished on the so what happened was the animal had to raise their neck up high to reach up to the like, fruits on the tree so what happened like you know the giraffe like a giraffe came up that they had like those animals which actually you know they were like their neck elevated in length that uh, there was lengthening in the neck and uh, even the four limbs of the giraffe you see not only the neck but only the, the four limbs also in a giraffe they are more lengthier than the hind limbs so these gradual you know evolution keep change, uh, uh, changing the purpose of the four limbs and then came these arboreals like arboreals or talk about the monkeys uh, they keep jumping from one uh, one branch to the other branch those are the arboreals so these animals 
because they jump when they suspend their you know body they completely suspend the body with their arms and they catching hold of the uh, branch of the tree so gradually their four limbs like you know the upper limbs they lengthen they lengthen compared to the lower limbs and even if you see the chimpanzee the just immediate figures of human beings it's said to be the you know the apes the anthropoid apes they can walk on the two limbs the four uh, the hind limbs they can set their four limbs free from the ground they can run they can catch hold of this branches they can jump from one plant to another and when you see that they have the length of the four limbs is more than the hind limbs and even the palm the palm is lengthier and even the digits are lengthier but then still they have like a both they use they even use the four limbs for walking in locomotion as well as well as for climbing gradually and gradually they came the origin of human beings then human beings like completely are free from the crown so we are not in a state of erect posture we are like walking the purpose of you know weight bearing posture maintaining and locomotion all is being given to the lower limbs and our four limbs are actually the upper limbs so this upper limb now have been completely free from the you know purpose of weight bearing and locomotion so now this evolution gradually you know what happened this this is the purpose of prehension this thing of prehension like you started gripping the objects not only the branches but now you can grip more precisely like the pen for signature for writing the paint brush for painting for music so we started use more precisely more in a well coordinated manner so we they became artists also then also for mechanical purpose right you know this upper limb what has like you know man man be called the most superior of all the animal kingdom so man is the master mechanic of all the animal kingdom the reason is the use of this highly developed upper limbs so what are the you know Mm. special features that you get you know in an advantage to just pre you know, mm, previous precursors of humans that you know apes chimpanzees and gorillas so here what we differ you know, the difference in us is that your upper limbs first of all they are freely suspended and one of the major reasons like if you you know what i'm telling is i'm telling you is the comparison of upper limbs between humans and the apes and chimpanzees that is like we have a well developed clavicle initially think about what the use of clavicle it actually is acting acting as a strut it is acting as a strut and it with this there is a pull on the upper portion of the you know the humerus this upper limb has been tied up to the axial skeleton with this of the clavicle so with that like you know the hand actually is not like sinking down here correcting that so it it stays away from the body what is this thing the use of clarity the other thing is yes so the this you know is the brachium this is anti brachium the arm and forearm there is an angulation here and that's called is carrying angle so this carrying angle also is an evolved phenomena in a human beings so this carrying angle makes you like carry carry luggage you know buckets gifts in your hand when you travel when you carry the luggage your hand should not go behind against your trunk or the hips this is another evolution which you are having an advantage from apes and chimpanzees so that now hands should not reach away from the body what other than on the giving is your palms like in the hands they are adapted so you got to know why the three advantages i have told you one thing was the clavicle suspending your limbs free then there's a carrying angle making your four limbs away from the body third thing was your hands which were now adapted like you can bring it closer to your pockets like you know they have been adapted so these three things then the another more important thing if you compare like with the apes the chimpanzees and us the humans this power of thumb like you know you have can easily freely rotate the thumb this freedom of movement of the thumb is an additional advantage in human beings the plane of the digits 
and the plane of the thumb is at 90 degrees in humus. This thumb actually has been rotated by 90 degrees which is not seen in the apes. Remember, if there is an injury to like, you know, mean and nerve in the hand, that's like carpal tunnel syndrome. So what happens, like your hand is brought back into the plane of the rest of the digits and this contour of this inner and is lost. So that is called ape-like thumb deformity. Remember, why? Because apes do have like that. So the thumb being at 90 degrees to the rest of the plane of the digits and also is like free, like, you know, this first intermetacarpal joint is not present in humans. So the thumb, the first metacarpal is completely free from the setting. Now you have this freedom of movement of thumb, right? No other thing. Then also this power of opposition, like you know, because this gives you additional power of rotation of the digits, it's not there in the apes and chimpanzees. So you can, with the tip of the thumb, you can touch the pulp of the rest of the digits. This is also this, these are all you know, precisely, you know, they have been, uh, you know, gifted in us these properties making the human being superior to the rest of all the animals. This twisting of the fingers, you can twist here, you know, a bowler, you can click it, how can you spin a ball? So these digits do have the power of twisting, right? And they remember these metacarpophalangeal joints, these are ellipsoid <coughs> The reason is they also have this power of twisting. So, you go out, you see all these very important uh, you know, differences in us human beings. Now, with all these powers, these advantages, you can imagine the prime function of course the upper limbs as in all animals, like you know, is offense. Offense is punching and pushing action. This is all like because of the free free mobility, you know. This upper limbs, like you know, the these have been like divided into <coughs> four portions. First portion is the pectoral, uh, this uh, shoulder region. The shoulder region includes the pectoral, the scapular, the axillary portion. This is like a fixed thing. So from where this brachium, the arm, is free, then you have the anti-brachium, then the hand, the mass. All these are like interconnected by joints into an egg. So you have so much of uh, you know, movability. <coughs> now the prime function, functionalization, let's know that all the animal world, the prime function is offense and defense. So your offense is also very easy. You can offense like you can push, you can punch in any of the directions. Then defense, defense also you can, you know, defend your body like there's a ball facing like, you know, towards you or anything. You can, you know, bring your hand in between. That's a defense thing. Then bowling, you can imagine the shoulder joint that is so freely mobile, like, you know, you can bowl, you can circumduction, you know, you can adduct it like this, you can embrace something, like, you can, you can abduct it like this, you can extend flexion, all of it. The combined movement is circumduction. So remember, like, you know, this joint, shoulder joint, the peculiar point is that it is <coughs> the most mobile joint in the human body. The joint having maximum freedom of movement in the human body is shoulder joint. Got it? So with this you have so much advantages. Yes, yes, I was comparing. So remember one additional thing you have an advantage to the other animals was that between radius and ulna, you also have this power of pronation and supination. This power of pronation and supination is also very important. Your dogs, cats <coughs> and Quadrupeds do not have this, you know, the interosseous membrane in some animals, even is like ossified. So there's no power of supination pronation. You're getting this advantage, like you know, for eating. When you pronate, you actually take a bite from the plate and then you bring it towards your mouth, then you have supination. Pronation and supination is actually providing you this easy freedom of eating. So, yeah, so you can see that how many good works you can do and think about the fine movements of the digits like you are, are now in the 21st century or the digital world you've been using those ipads touchpad so cameras you can imagine the digits the pulp of the digits so many works you can do on the touchpad like you can zoom out you can zoom in you can pinch you can you know diverge this thing you know then you can scroll down, 
like swipe down, swipe left, swipe right. You can like use the three digits, you can do two digits sometimes, you can single tap, you can have a double tap, right click, left click, right? So on the touchpad, you can do so many different actions just by the tip of your digits. Apart from all this thing, you know, it is a very sensitive structure also. Your arm has having a thick skin, thick and translucent skin. Did you remember? I think I taught you within this skin portion that the stratum lucidum that makes it translucent. And they have like enough amount of sweat gland. Extraceptive receptors for touch, pain, pressure, vibration, two point discriminative touch, right? Stereognosis, like so all those so many advanced sensing receptors all the way here on the pulp of the digits. So that makes you, you know so much the hand actually make is so much you know sensitive and all this is like reciprocated in the brain there's the sensory homunculus we have a big representation for all those different sensations of the arm and accordingly there's a motor homunculus so that you can use of those fine twenty <coughs> intrinsic muscles in the arm remember that so all those fine digital movements you can brought up you can bring about according to the you know the motor homunculus so this is how you can say that man Remember, like, tell me, let me tell you this is called the master of, uh, you know, master mechanic of the human or the master mechanic of the animal world. In Urdu, if you call, if you know, if you remember, in Urdu we call it that the human being is called as Ashraful Makhlukat, like the supreme creature of the God. And of course, everything is being, you know, decided by the, the human brain. And that also is post no doubt the grey matter, the intelligent power for the greater, not no doubt the creating capacity, creating capacity in buffaloes and elephants, they even have like a big creating capacity. But human's brain, the amount of grey matter is much more. So I think we have some got an idea of this evolution of upper limbs. Got it?